sorry it's so dark still. We've got the trailer backed up to our run. We have a little run that basically goes right back to the barn where we've got George's Pepper right there. So we'll walk it. We've got a little feed dropped in the uh, trailer here and that'll help us get uh, get her moved in. So let's see what we can do. We've got it to where she's got to go into this run basically, or excuse me, once she gets into the dairy area, the old dairy area, the pig area now, once we get her into there, she can't really get out of there. So that's good. And that way we can run her in. Beauty is pretty calm. Uh, she's loud, but she's pretty calm. She doesn't try to get too crazy. The only time, the only thing is she's used to following Allie anytime I lead her somewhere. She's either with Allie or daddy -o, Cause she's never the boss, but she's always kind of the second in command. So we'll see how she does trying to do this without any other cow. Last time we had, um, we had uh, uh, Ike with her and the time before we had Sizzle with her. So let's see how she does loading. What we're gonna do is swing this gate back closed once we get her into this corral. But, but first, we've got a little feed to lure her. But this is our loading, fan, our loading paddock. We've got one gate we gotta close so she won't run out of this paddock. And then once we get her in this paddock, it should be pretty easy to load her. So they say. I got her into the corral next to the pigs. You see, we got this. This is not really a gate for it. This is a gate for the run. So it's a little short. So I'm gonna kind of stand here. Gave her a little feed, but she's inside the corral. We've got the, the run over there kind of closed off. She's got one run to go. And this is where it goes to that trailer over there. So let's see if we can get her heading that way without going into this hole here. All right, she walked right into the run. Let's see if she loads. I've got a little feed in there. So hopefully she'll go and load. Make this a lot easier than, look at that. Man, I kind of hate to get rid of her now. <laughs> so that was a lot easier than, than it could have been. That only took about four minutes. So, uh, oops, excuse the camera. I'm sorry, guys. So she loaded well. There she is. All right. Say goodbye to the homestead, beauty girl. On to the next farm. Okay, so we're loaded. It was good that we went and got the sheep yesterday because we already had the trailer hooked up. She did great. And you can see she's not a little cow. She, I mean, she's not a little cow at all. But she's just not what we're needing. Uh, with our beef herd, we're trying to get bigger. And with our dairy herd, we're trying to stay about the same. So we're going to go and take her. Um, it's a beautiful morning. Beautiful, beautiful morning. No sun, major sunrise this morning. But just a beautiful, overcasted morning. Milk, uh, milking was good this morning. It's cool, but not too hot, not too cold. A beautiful day on the homestead. Well, just dropped off Beauty. Um, you know, it's kind of bittersweet. I, when we initially buy cows, um, pretty much I want them bred on farm. I don't want to sell any. I just want to uh, keep ones and grow the herd, or either, you know. Uh, some of them go to freezer camp. It's never my intention to buy and sell, really, because that's not what we're in. We're not really in a cow-calf operation, or we're not even in a steer operation. It's just really more for us, just complete sustainability. But it's amazing that out of my first three cows I bought, which were Allie, Beauty, and Sizzle, Allie's the only one that we still have, and which she's my main, one of my main milk cows. We'll, we probably will never get rid of her. She'll probably be at our farm forever. Um, but sizzle and then we thought beauty would be too and we knew she was going to be smaller and we were okay with that but um she just hadn't grown off like she needs to and, and to be honest with you i don't know if she could even be bred she probably weighs about 550 600 so i don't think she was worth uh, taking a freezer count unless we were just doing strictly ground beef and that's i felt like at that point we'd be wasting uh wasting her and, and spending money that that probably could be utilized somewhere else so hate to sell her it's one of those things that the last thing you want to do is uh buy and sell cows uh, or for me it is and uh it's bittersweet i hate to take her but she's she's dropped off and hopefully she'll do good for another owner and you never know uh, she may grow off even better it's just for us we can't see uh the investment in value in her to keep her and uh you know if you're if you do this long enough you realize some animals are perfect for your farm some animals are not and and beauty and sizzle just were not perfect for our farm so we're gonna go back to the farm get some other things done and uh like i said that's just one task we had to do this morning something i really did not want to do i'm not gonna lie but she loaded well uh, if she would have loaded more difficult i think i'd have been 
more happy to get rid of her because uh <clears throat> like sizzle sizzle was a nuisance i mean he pretty much broke fence he never loaded he did nothing like we wanted so it was even though it's hard to get rid of an animal um it was okay to get rid of him because he was a little bit easier to deal with to, to get rid of excuse me to make that decision uh, beauty she was a sweet sweet cow i mean just loud but really was a sweet cow and has been with us since we pretty much got cows and added those to the homestead so it's just a time passing that uh you know i, I kind of hate but i hope that she'll do good somewhere else So today was just kind of maintenance day for the cows. We, uh, you can leave that one open, sweetheart. Hey, you can leave it open, babe. Um, it was maintenance for the cows. So we, we moved cows, of course, but then we had to, we gave them a little alfalfa, a little grain, because we, uh, we treated them with uh, Shakely's H2, which we put in their water, and apple cider vinegar, which we put in their water uh, for deworming, kind of a health boost. Um, and then, of course, we also spray them with our bug spray. So. Uh, we've we've made the bug spray. Uh, we've had three mint Thursdays on the Shakely H2 and the apple cider vinegar. So uh, check those out if you haven't watched them. But so we've done that to all of them, but the calves. But we did put minerals, new minerals out for the cows, for the bulls, and for the calves, just to kind of make sure everybody's kind of going into the season in a good good way. All the cows seem healthy, doing great. But uh, we'd rather be uh, proactive than reactive to something if they get you know get something. Uh, if you're not doing the best you can to stay natural with these few little uh, tricks we use, you end up having your shots and deworming medicine, and we don't want that. All right, let's go. Spinning out. I start filming him and he doesn't go. <laughs> he don't need being fast, David. He doesn't need to be in too. Alright, go put him back in. <laughs> okay, so what have we been hauling this big box around for? Okay, this is a no waste. Um, this is the box that we had, the first batch of chicks that I hatched out from our incubator. This is the box, kind of like our brood box that we had them in. So I wanted to take all of their fertilizer that was in the wood chips and I've been dragging it around to all of the trees. You can see I've gone around and just put like two little scoops by each one. First say, what, what, what did we just do to get out of the orchard and then for you to do this? Oh yeah, well we just had, we moved, the, the chickens were wrapped in this. And they've been going around, obviously, and pooping anyway, and they've been eating all the bugs. But as a no waste, we we're gonna just actually I I drug that out of the compost, <laughs> and we were just gonna leave it there and let it compost there. But I feel like we can get so much better use out of it putting it near. Say, look, I'm getting those ants. Putting it near the roots of the plants, kind of like we what our idea with the chicken of putting them. Welcome in Welcome to South Mississippi with fire ants. <laughs> putting them here and that not only are they scratching the grass back they're eating the bugs which decreases decreases the bug count tremendously but they're also pooping by the roots of all of our orchard and um i just wanted to get that it, it was not much fertilizer in there they've been in there for a few weeks it was a lot more wood chips but to be able to utilize those a little bit better so I've just, I use this and you can see I've gone around all of the trees that are here. There are some down there on the far end and I've just kind of been spreading that out. I couldn't see wasting it. I didn't want to waste it. So we decided to put it to use. It's going to go to good, good use for sure. And I'm excited about that. No waste y'all, no waste. We use the wood chips for the chicks to bed in, and then we turned around and put those on our fruit tree. You can't beat that.
Household stuff, I guess. It's all. I actually should turn it on so that way you get a good pop on video. Trump and the gang today saying good morning. What's up, dude? What's up, Trump? Get Trump, Minnie. Got Daisy and got Donald back there. What's up, Trump? We'll get you a little breakfast this morning. We, we were trying to finish up a little bit this morning. All of a sudden, it started storming on us. Had to change clothes. We were soaking wet. But one, one thing we did do was we had to move the, the sheep. So what I did, I went on and put a new charger. We have several chargers, solar panel chargers, either 10 or 18 miles, low impedance chargers. Make sure you get that, especially when you're using net wire fencing. Uh, the cattle... Uh, solar charger the Patriot does not need to be low impedance but all these other ones do need to be low impedance but anyways we've uh, got one off that we're gonna let recharge we've got a new one back on since we moved the sheep I'll show you our rotation like I said we're gonna have about seven or eight rotations but you see the very this is the last one they were on so you see they they don't bear it but I mean they eat all the clover they eat all the grass everything even down to the kudzu and weeds I mean stuff that the cows won't touch which is awesome this is where they were last week. So you see it's got better grass. So you see nothing. A little bit better. You see the line. And then look in the very far back. How thick all that grass, lush all that is right there. That's from just three moves ago. So they've got a whole nother one, two, and maybe even three more moves on all this grass that they have not touched yet. We just moved them into this paddock here. You see the fresh grass they're on now. So they have been here... They're usually there every about three or four days and then we move them. So we at least got another two or three weeks right here. So by the time we get back over there after they've done dropped their manure loads and after they've done cleaned it up, ate all the bad stuff, all the good stuff, it'll be fresh again and great grass for them to eat. So that's why it's so important to move them. Uh, they've done excellent. I mean, I can't complain. They're really better than I anticipated. I was really blown. I, di I didn't know what to expect with sheep because I've never owned them. Uh, we've never been really around them. So just didn't know what to expect and they, they come to us we'll get to pet them uh, now we do have to have a little feed and tie some when, when we want to pet them but what they're doing phenomenal move their shelter over their minerals over everything they need uh, move the little hay uh, which they probably won't even fool with because man they're eating all this fresh grass what's so amazing is cows will eat this rye grass and this tall stringy grass quick they're eating more of the clover the weeds that's kind of in the middle isn't that awesome so you don't have to actually have any more land than what you have with your cows you just you can rotate them right behind each other and they'd eat all the junk that they don't eat um, now don't you're wrong lambs need to be the i mean sheep need to be behind the cows because sheep will eat everything cows just won't just a little bit but like all this all these random weeds he smoked them which is awesome so um, but everything's going good. They're, they've done great. What I've got to do, though, I've got to, uh, there's a little piece of something right here. i got to get it off there, so I'm going to turn this charger off right quick so it won't light me up. I get this little piece of weed off or something. They get kind of skittish sometimes. But they've done great. I can't complain. So let's get this other charger in the sun when it starts getting sunny again, because right now it is nasty. And don't get me wrong, we need the rain because our garden uh, has, has had to help it a little bit because... Um, we didn't have to have rain and we still had good soil from all the rains we've had in January and February but it sure didn't hurt to get a good fresh rain on fresh uh, fresh seeds planted so 